I don't know how Richard Hammond does it, restoring cars, because back in the day, cars were actually quite easy to service. You know, you could change the spark clubs, you know, you could do that, you know, change the starter motor, but now you just open the bonnet and you think, wow, what? It's like a computer. They're like, yeah, they're like computers, they're aren't like they? Computers. They're, it's like AI. Um, and he's here now, he's keeping his foot on the pedal when it comes to restoring cars of their former glory. He's even roped in his family into the business. Uh, here's an insight into Richard Hammond's workshop at full throttle. It's right up my street, this series. I'm really looking forward to it. It's but you, you, you were restoring stuff when you were in, in your teens, weren't you? Yeah, well, I, I used to rebuild bicycles all the time. I'm fascinated by machinery, analogue machines that you can... Analogue machines? Yeah, 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 that have, like, bits you can see that exactly. move. Nothing yeah. against solid-state stuff, that's great, but I can't understand it. Yeah. No. So it's classics that you're restoring in the series? Yeah, I mean, yeah. some would say it's an odd time to set up a classic car restoration business, um, because <laughs> cars aren't entirely popular, but they're not going away. We still need to get places to do what we want to do in our lives, and I think classic cars genuinely have a role to play in that. It's make, do and mend, isn't it? Which is it, very much of the moment. Well, make, do and mend, that's true, and, and, and restoring what's there. Well, we try and to. also, it is for many people uh, their first, and in some cases, you know, like me, never properly have done, would love to get stuck in, their first understanding of, of, of engineering, of the physicality of what makes things work, which, if we could allow ourselves to be part of, is, is a great understanding, well, isn't it? Well, without wanting to get heavy on that, absolutely... Go on, he get heavy, It's not Richard. a bad time for more people to feel engaged with, to have permission to engage with yep. engineering. Yeah. And it isn't always solid state, you know, in terms of cars, things are changing hugely. Yeah, there's going to be electric cars, they're here, but they can't be the only solution. No. We can't make enough of them. What's your... So analogue, physical things, and actually some of the... Just briefly, so don't don't look, carry, on. There. carry on. Um, in terms of engineering and technology, uh, a lot of what we're seeing at the moment is very kind of, oh, I can't get involved in that, it's just fiddly yeah. things that don't move. Mm. Whereas actually, gravity batteries, for instance, one of the biggest problems <clears throat> with renewable energy, how do you store it? What do you do with it? Mm. Mm. Gravity battery works by just basically a massive weight winds up mm. like that, using the renewable energy when it's spare. Yeah. And then, well, once that's wound up, if you let that fall down again, it'll spin that, and that's a motor. Wow. So it's very analogue. Yeah. So what Are I we... mean is there's still engineering is going to be needed. And we want, don't we, more girls to get involved in it? We want more people regardless, because we want more brains. So whether, <laughs> it doesn't matter, but I mean, the, the gender of the brain is irrelevant. It's the ideas and the creativity. How's your yeah. family involved, then, in the, in the Um They have no choice, <laughs> because they're my family. Um, <laughs> they're stuck with it. Mindy, my wife, is involved in trying to rein me in. Right. I tend to... I'm very... You'll be surprised to hear childish and bouncy and over-enthusiastic okay. with things. So Mindy tries to stop me going too far. Izzy and Willow, my daughters... Izzy actually genuinely is interested. She really how old, how old are they, Richard? 23 and 20 now. Okay. That's years ago, that image there. Yeah. Um, Izzy... Does she get yes. stuck in? Does she go... Yeah, for... they're both... I mean, they're both practical girls. Willow yeah. is more sort of hooves than wheels, if it's not a horse. She loves her little VW Polo. Actually, Willow is an example of what I think is almost a new breed of car enthusiasts. Mm. And the smallest cog, the workshop. Yeah. We want to restore classic cars. It's what we do, employing yeah, yeah. fabulous skills and craft that go back decades and decades. But quite a lot of people like Willow, my daughter, my younger daughter, she's only interested in horses, not cars. But if you talk to her about, oh, well, one day you'll be able to, on your smartphone, order an autonomous, anonymous box to come to where you are and pick you up and take you to where you want to go. Yeah, I get that. Mm. But then she'll turn around and say, well, yeah, but I love my little VW Polo. I want to pounce on that. I want to pounce, right. on, that kind of a car want to pounce on that word love. You see, I love my cars as mm. well. I've always loved cars. I have a relationship. I actually, I'll, I'll admit this, I, I talk to my cars. Oh, so. If I've been on holiday... What do you say, Richard? If I've been on holiday uh, and the car's in the garage and I come back, I get in and I say, how, how have you been? How's if, your battery? If, if <laughs> You know? yeah. what, what does he Richard, say Richard have, you, have you ever well, fallen out with it? That's when it becomes <laughs> slightly more... No, but I know what you mean. We, we do. do. We because love they them. move <laughs> us physically and therefore they move us emotionally. A car yeah. right. provides everything you need beyond shelter at the back of your cave. We need, what, food, shelter, warmth, company, a mate, resources. Mm -hmm. Well, beyond shelter, you have to leave where you are and it's your car that does that for you. So, of course, we have a relationship. There's no time for this story, but my dad worked for Ford. He was in the press office and we got the very first Ford Mustang to arrive in the UK, which my dad took, took uh, really? a delivery of, yeah, and he had to prep it up for Prince Philip. Uh, they lent wow. it to Ford, lent it to Prince Philip for We've three months. We've always got time for stories Ford like this. We had a Ford Mustang in our drive in Romford, Essex. I can't see... We had a Ford see... Mustang for two nights. I can't see the late Prince Philip in a stang. 
<laughs> well, give, us, give it some beans, shall I? You know what? I, I can. Yeah. I can. I can. I can. Do you know what? Okay, I'll change my view. I could have. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. And I'll push Did he leave Elevenses on the drive from it? I, I, took, I took our cat to have a look at the car, and, and the cat threw up in the car nice. the night before it was due to be delivered. Nice. That's good. My dad yeah. was cleaning it out at three in the morning. Well, before Prince Philip. Before the, 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 the night before Prince Philip. Do excuse the cat six. Yeah, so. My dad was not happy. Nice. Good to see you. Nice Looks to like see a great you. series. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank you. We had fun doing okay. it. Yeah, no cats in cars. It's always an next. adventure, isn't it, Laura, with Richard? You just <laughs> oh, you never anything. get to the... No, no, this Richard. Oh, yeah. no, you're no, an no, adventure you're just a in a different it was way. just nice. But you no. never know what stories are going to come out. It's brilliant. And you care even less. I didn't we expect do. cat sick in a Mustang. Yeah. No, For Prince Philip. Stank. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it. <laughs>